Hi, in this series we're going to be learning how to use React and Firebase to create a fully featured social media application. This application will let users sign up by filling the sign up form right here, which will be validated once it's submitted and if all the info is valid, an account will be created for us and we will be redirected to the homepage. In the homepage, we can view posts which are called screams in this platform. We can see comments and the number of likes any scream has. Uh, we can also upload an image that will be our profile picture that will be stored in our Firebase storage bucket. Uh, we can also update our profile by adding details about ourselves such as a bio, our location and uh, our personal or professional website. Once these are submitted, they are validated and once they're valid, these details will be publicly visible to other users of the application. But we can also always edit them again if we're not happy. Uh, we can like other people's screams. We can like as many screams as we want. Uh, we can, of course, post comments to screams and they will be reflected immediately as we will see here. And we can, of course, post our own screams by uh, pressing the plus button at the top and type in stuff as you see me here, type very slowly and uh, press in submit. And once we submit a post, it will immediately show up on the application. And we can of course like our own post as absurd as you or I might think that is. We can of course post as many screams as we want. And if we make a mistake, uh, we can also delete the scream. we using the delete button will show us a scream, um, a confirm dial, just to make sure that we don't accidentally delete them. We can see other users' pages and their posts. And if we do log out right now, and if we do log in as the other user that we just liked and commented to their scream, uh, we will see uh, a bunch of notifications uh, informing us of exactly just that. And if we click on any notification, it will take us to that post that the notification was talking about. As I mentioned, our app will use Firebase as a backend. And this right here is the database and we can see it update in real time as we add screens, which is going to be super useful when we are developing our app. We can see our database collections, things like screams, notifications, and comments right here and all the other collections. Uh, we can also see information about our users and stuff like that. We will also be using Redux for managing our application-wide state, which will hold the data needed in our React application. Uh, this right here is the Redux DevTools, uh, which will be super useful later when we are uh, developing our app. We will make it easier to see what's happening in our application, what data we have, and what errors we have. And uh, this will all be clear when we dive into the Redux later. Before we start anything, I just want to give a quick run through the tools that we're going to be using. Uh, starting with the big one, the front end library of choice that we're going to be using is React. Uh, React is a great framework for building component based web applications. Uh, even though it's technically not a framework, it's a library, we will be uh, complementing it with things like uh, React Router DOM and Axios and a couple of other libraries that will make it feel like a complete framework and will allow us to do everything that we need to do. Uh, so yeah, it's a great library for building components, building templates for our pages, and building dynamic markup for our, uh, for our application pages. Now, I do have a big disclaimer though. If you are not familiar with React, uh, an absolute newbie and have never touched React, uh, this series is not for you. I recommend that you learn the basics of React and get comfortable with it. And of course, be comfortable writing JavaScript and then come back to the series and then you will do uh, some proper learning. If you're familiar with React, then you're right at home. So next thing is Firebase. Firebase is a great platform as a service. Uh, we will use it as our backend. It offers us multiple services of which we will use Cloud Firestore as a database. Uh, it's a real time database and it gives us to access to a couple of really cool functionalities to use a NoSQL database, document based, which we will see later. Uh, next thing is cloud functions. We're going to be, um, we're not going to be writing like a Node.js, uh, s like server code, even though that cloud functions are based on Node.js. We will be writing a couple of functions that will be run whenever we need, uh, to run them. Uh, next thing is authentication. We're going to be using Firebase authentication to register our users and uh, log them in and get authentication tokens and uh, a bunch of other cool stuff. 
and we will also use their cloud storage service to store our uh, profile images that are submitted by our users. Next thing is Material UI, which is something that I've come to learn and really love recently. Uh, Material UI is one of the best, if not the best, React implementation of uh, Google Material Design standards. Think of Google Material Design as like a CSS framework. It's a couple of standards for designing uh, user interfaces. Uh, it's really cool. I really like Material UI. They have amazing documentation, which makes uh, learning it and uh, implementing it really uh, smooth sailing. Next thing is, this might come as a surprise to some of you. We're going to be using Express. I know we're not using Node.js, but Cloud Functions are essentially Node.js code that is executed on demand. So we don't need to use Express, but it's better, I think, in my opinion, if we do, because it makes the code much cleaner, as you will see later. It will help us group our uh, code and separate our routes properly and uh, handle our requests and send our response uh, properly in writing our API. Uh, last but not least for sure is Redux. So our application is going to have a lot of components and they're going to need to access data. And best practice is when you have a lot of components and a lot of them need to access data is to not pass data from one to the other, AKA prop drilling. I will post a, a link to a really cool post that explains why Redux is a thing and why people use it instead of just passing props around. Uh, Redux makes it really seamless to have an application wide state that all the components can separately talk to and fetch data and send data to if needed. Uh, so yeah, we will of course be diving deeper into the definitions and functionalities of each of these tools when we work with them separately. I just wanted to quickly uh, show you what this series is going to be using. So I hope you are really excited for writing this code as I am excited to record these videos. Uh, I might not seem sound like it because I've been recording for a while now. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.